Welcome to Affiliate Buzz, the longest running program on affiliate marketing. James and Arlene Martell are here to inspire, inform, and motivate you with expert insight, interviews, and information that will increase your bottom line. Advance your affiliate marketing efforts every week on Affiliate Buzz. Now, please welcome James and Arlene. Yes, it's James Martell here, and welcome to edition number 465 of the Affiliate Buzz, where we've been keeping affiliates inspired, informed, and motivated to succeed with affiliate programs since way back in 2003. If you happen to be joining us here live today on Cranberry Radio, it's great to have you with us. If you're joining us through a podcast on your smartphone, tablet, computer, or Wi-Fi radio, a very special welcome to you as well. Arlene is away today. She's actually over on the island uh, visiting our daughter. Uh, uh, But not to worry, I am joined by a very special guest today, Ricky Shetty, known as a digital nomad and daddy blogger. And today we're going to talk about how to create a life traveling the world with sponsored travel, including free hotels, sightseeing, transport, and even your food. Now, currently, Ricky... And his family are on a three, or sorry, on a one-year around-the-world trip visiting Asia, the Middle East, Africa, South America, and Central America. Ricky's going to share with us how he gets sponsored travel uh, through the Daddy Blogger, or th- as being the Daddy Blogger, I probably should say, and how uh, we can generate multiple streams of income online. Now, of course, that's something we talk about a lot, and I'm interested uh, to get Ricky's insight on that as well. Ricky, welcome to the Affiliate Buzz. Thank you so much, James. It's great to be back. I was on an episode about two years ago, so I'm glad to be a returnee on your incredible podcast. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Definitely an honor and a pleasure. Well, hey, my friend, and it's really good to uh, to get a chance to catch up with you again. Of course, you're a fellow Canadian, fellow Vancouverite. Uh, we know you as the daddy blogger. You are obviously a digital nomad, and you run a number of very successful conferences. Uh, the YVR conference series uh, in Vancouver here, which I always enjoy attending. But you are now off on a world trip and i know uh many people dream of doing that uh, especially heading out for a year and not alone you've got your family with you don't you i do i uh, i'm uh, happily married to my wife Anne, and we have three wonderful children our daughter just turned five uh, in may and then our son is three and a half and then our other son is one so we have a five-year-old a three-year-old and a one-year-old so three kids who are five and under uh when we started, it was three kids under five. Now it's three kids five and under, and uh, <laughs> they're loving it. You know, uh, they've been already to four continents. They've been to North America, South America, Asia, and Africa, and uh, they've already uh, all going to uh, ten countries. So uh, it's incredible. My son, he just turned one year old in uh, May, and he's already been to four continents. How many one-year-old babies can say they've been to four continents? None that I know other than yours at this point, and uh, congrats on that. And I know uh, I would say make sure you take lots of pictures, but I know you, and you do, and uh, you keep us all updated on your, uh, of course, on your Facebook page, and it's always good to uh, to get inspired to see uh, what can be done. And I must say, as a guy with four grown kids uh, who has taken them on many trips uh, and travel adventures over the years, uh, but never really when they were that young, what's it like to travel? With a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old, full-time travel. You know, we intentionally left when they're young because it's going to be very hard to pull them out of school when they're already in elementary or high school because obviously they'll have their commitments to their school, a commitment to their friends. So uh, we were very intentional about let's do this before it's too late <laughs> because I don't want to be waiting uh, just for the, the Christmas breaks or the summer breaks or until they graduate elementary or high school. So uh, we made the conscious decision to pull them out of school. Uh, it was just elementary, uh, sorry, just uh, preschool. So they're not really missing much um in terms of your question about how is it to travel with kids under five uh or five and under now it is definitely challenging uh you know i don't want to uh, uh fool anyone by saying it's a walk in the park uh we do a lot of walks in the parks and sometimes they throw tantrums <laughs> uh, uh but you know uh we 
would have tantrums no matter where we would be in the world. Uh, we're actually from Vancouver, BC, Canada, not too far from you over there in White Rock. We lived in Burnaby. And in Burnaby, they threw tantrums in the shopping mall, in the car, uh, when we went to the playground, in the school, at home. So I would rather them throw tantrums when, they're in the ro- when we're on the road in Rio de Janeiro, Cape Town, or Dubai, because I know, based on their maturity level and their age, that they're going to throw tantrums, they're going to be whiny, they're going to want their candy and their chocolate. So, uh, you know, you just kind of roll with it and uh, you just make sure that their needs are being met. Uh, we're very um, conscious of the fact that they get tired easily, uh, that they need to be fed on time, that they need uh, some kind of routine, that they need to sleep early, wake up early. And we're, we're trying to do that as much as possible. Obviously, it's, diffi- it's more difficult to achieve stability and routine on the road than it is back in your hometown. Uh, but, you know, we've been doing it for the last six months and our kids absolutely love it. Uh, uh, they like learning languages. They like meeting new people. Uh, they like trying new food. So it's been a really good experience for them. And it's almost easier for them, James, than it is for us. I mean, we struggle. I mean, we struggle with the language. We struggle with the frustration of the uh, people when you can't communicate with them. We uh, we struggle with the cultural differences. But they roll with the punches. They are very flexible, very adaptable, as most children are. So in a way, it's actually advantageous to travel when they are this flexible. And their role, I guess, would be just to be cute. Oh, their role is to uh, be the bridge builder. I mean, uh, kids are an incredible source of connection. Uh, No matter what color, culture, race, ethnicity, uh, country, language you're from, uh, kids are a bond that connects people because uh, kids are a global entity and everyone has kids or knows kids. So just when they see kids, Um, they automatically can connect to us, even though they might speak Spanish or Portuguese, like in our area, um, you know, of South America where we're traveling. Uh, So we might not be able to communicate with them, but uh, through the kid smile and uh, through their gestures. uh, So definitely the cuteness factor helps. (laughs) And I I think play is definitely a universal language. uh, So our kids can play and interact with uh, strangers, if you call them that. On the topic of... uh kids in school and trips and travel, I got a little secret for you because longtime listeners to the buzz would know this because of course our kids are now all in their twenties. In fact, the oldest has just turned 30 Adam. Uh, but when they were in high school and elementary school, uh, we pulled them out of school all the time and we'd be heading now. We wouldn't leave for a year, mm-hmm. but we did many three week vacations with them or 10 days here or a week there and lots of them. And the teachers would used to drive the teachers nuts. It's like, you can't take them out of school again. <laughs> it's like, bye, see ya. <laughs> and off we would go. And you know what? They, they, I, I'm sure they probably missed maybe six months of school over their, the lifetime of their school. That didn't seem to hurt them a bit. And the teachers are fine. And the kids had, uh, our kids had just a great time. So I will bet you, you're going to be one of those guys that will be doing that as well. I think so. I mean, uh, once you travel, you kind of get the travel bug, they call it, and you can't stop. I mean, uh, I did a lot of travel in my 20s, and uh, I took a break. I did actually stop, and quote unquote, because I got married. I had kid number one, kid number two. So I did uh, stop in the sense I wasn't doing as much overseas travel for a few years of the early marriage and the early parenting days. Uh, but, 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 but it was in me. The, the bug was uh, still had infected me. So it was only a matter of time because I, before I hit the road again. And I know if and when we ever come back to Vancouver, I know travel will be part of our life, whether it's going to be um, just through the summers or just through the, uh, uh, through the winters or because we're digital nomads. We can uh, work and travel um, pretty much any time we want. And we can uh, homeschool, world school, unschool, do some self-directed learning. So um, I'm looking forward to the years ahead and uh, what travel adventures it will bring to us. So now, of course, I want to talk to you at length about how to get sponsored travel with the free hotel, sightseeing, transport, and food. That's definitely, I know, a big hot button uh, to our listeners, uh, of course. Uh, Before we do that, though, let's talk about your travel. Currently, where are you? Yeah, so we're currently in Georgetown, Guyana, which is in the northeast of South America. It's right along the Atlantic Ocean, and it's kind of, um, it's next to Venezuela, just south of Trinidad. So if you can picture the South American continent and you feel, if you look northeast, there are three tiny countries. One's called, one's called French Guyana, the other's called Suriname, and the third is called Guyana. And there were actually three 
independent uh, colonies from the European superpowers. So uh, French Guyana was a French colony, Suriname was a Dutch colony, and uh, English Guyana was an English colony. But it's actually uh, gained independence for 51 years now. So now it's a completely independent country within South America. And best of all, James, it's just the only English-speaking country in the entire continent. So for us, after traveling around Brazil and uh, Argentina, Paraguay, uh, and trying to speak Spanish and Portuguese, finally we've hit the uh, jackpot and we can finally uh, connect with the locals in our native language, which is English. So we're loving Guyana, and Georgetown's the capital. How do you pick where you – take us back to the beginning. So how did, how did you come up with the idea of heading out? What was the decision process you went through? And take us up to the day you left. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I don't mind sharing a little bit of a personal story here because um, I traveled in my 20s um, as a backpacker. So I was traveling uh, around Europe. Um, so I first did a working holiday in London, and then I traveled Europe. And then I did a trip to the Middle East from uh, uh, Istanbul to Cairo. And then I, I went to Japan and I taught English for a year. Then I traveled around Asia. Uh, then I did Australia. I was studying in Sydney and uh, Hillsong Bible College. And then I traveled around Asia, Australia and New Zealand, Oceania area. So uh, i done a, uh, quite a bit of travel before I got married, about uh, 50 countries roughly. Um, and then I got married about six years ago um, in 2011. And, um, you know, um, when you get married, uh, usually you end up settling down, getting a mortgage, living in the suburbs, and your whole life changes from a life of, I call it, freedom and adventure <laughs> to a life of more stability and routine. And I was following the path of, um, uh, you know, uh, getting married, having kid number one, kid number two, buying yourself a property. So um, all of a sudden something changed because... Uh, I was uh, commuting back and forth, uh, driving my kids to school, and I started feeling discontent. Um, there was something in me that wanted to uh, live this life of adventure, but somehow I had been domesticated. <laughs> I had been <laughs> suburbanized, James. And some people are cool with being suburbanized. They like uh, the suburbs. They like uh, 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 you know, going to the Walmarts and going to the school back and forth. And they like the small town feel. But for me, I, um, I knew there was a world out there outside of my hometown. And uh, it was crawling at me. It was like uh, uh, it was actually making me uh, feel uh, quite down. I was feeling uh, going through a little bit of depression, uh, feeling uh, unmotivated. And my wife was like, what's going on, Ricky? You know, you're such a positive, happy guy. Um, and I said, you know, um, I really want to travel. I miss those days. And it's very important to be honest and open with your spouse. And I know, James, you and Arlene are very open and honest. <laughs> I know you guys personally. And even on the affiliate buzz, you guys uh, duke it out sometimes so <laughs> very true it's definitely yeah it's very open uh, very important to be open and honest with your spouse about your emotions uh and a lot of husbands they don't share openly that they're going through a difficult time and and it affects the marriage and affects the family dynamic so uh, i i share this publicly on things like you know um uh, your podcast just because uh the other men who are facing those demons like depression or uh, uh, lack of fulfillment or lack of purpose. And I was facing that. I mean, uh, I, I was happy overall. I was running events, conferences. Uh, I had a good community, good support. But, but, but I know there was something missing. And uh, for me, that was this desire for adventure and travel. For other people, it might be um, uh, starting their own business or becoming an entrepreneur or uh, just trying something different. So the etymology of the travels was that... Uh, I, I, I started being honest with my wife, saying, I want to travel more. And my wife's like, what? well, we have two young kids. And, you know, she was pregnant with the third. And she's like, how can we, how can we do this? I mean, um, so my suggestion was, why don't we travel during maternity leave? Because in Canada, <laughs> uh, for those of you listeners who are outside of Canada, we have one of the best healthcare and medical systems in the world. And we have one of the best maternity, uh, maternity leave systems in the world because women get one year Paid maternity leave. I repeat, paid maternity leave. I repeat, once again, paid <laughs> maternity leave. So isn't that incredible? For one whole year, your wife, your partner will be off, and she'll keep getting your income. So for, for kid number one and two, for our daughter, Rianne, for son, Ryan, we actually just stayed home. I mean, my wife was uh, um, uh, staying home, taking care of the kids. But for kid number three, I was just like, uh, we got to do something, you know, because once uh, your maternity leave is finished, 
uh, it's going to be very difficult to take you out of work and take the kids out of school, like I mentioned. So it seemed kind of like the perfect storm or the perfect um, um, series of amino acids brewing <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to uh, cause us to leave. Um, so we ended up actually making the uh, radical decision to travel during her math leave. Uh, we waited um, until uh, our son was six months just because he had to do his vaccines and making sure he was healthy. Um, and then uh, at six months, we left with our son, who, um, who is Renzo, and with our two older kids. And we, uh, we decided to start this uh, epic travel journey. And in terms of the countries we um, decided to travel to, James... Hmm? Uh, we decided that uh, we wanted to go to countries both of us had never been to. Um, so instead of returning to the countries that I had gone to when I was in my 20s or my wife gone, had gone to when she was a single uh, female uh, without uh, me, uh, we decided why don't we go both create new memories and new experiences as a couple, uh, as a family. So we went to intentionally to new countries, uh, besides Philippines, because uh, my wife's parents are there, are from there. So we, uh, she said, as long as we go to the Philippines, I'm cool. So we went to the Philippines, where we celebrated her, her parents' 50th wedding anniversary. And then from the Philippines, we went to Hong Kong, where we went to Hong Kong Disneyland, which is uh, obviously a great um, attraction for the kids. And then we went to Dubai, where her sister was. So we were able to visit Dubai, which is an incredible city. I love just raving about how incredible Dubai is. And then we went to South Africa because I turned 40 this year, James. And one of my uh, bucket list goals was to uh, go on an animal safari. And instead cool. of waiting till I was retired or old and gray and unable to walk, I decided to uh, 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 do this bucket list um, dream when I hit my 40th birthday. So on my 40th birthday, I was on the second day of the animal safari deep in the heart of Kruger National Park, which is the top one of the top game uh, parks in the world. And I was in Kruger National Park and we did this incredible birthday celebration where we had um, uh, African dancers come out and sing me happy birthday. And uh, oh, it brings me to tears just thinking about it. Uh, and watch the YouTube video as well. Uh, we put it out on YouTube about Ricky's 40th birthday if you Google it on, or look it up on YouTube. Um, so after South Africa, we went to South America and this is actually mine and my wife's first time ever to this continent. Um, hmm. We've done every other continent except Antarctica and South America. So that's why we're um, concentrating on this continent. Uh, we went to Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, uh, French Guiana, Suriname, Guyana, and then we'll be heading over to Colombia, um, Ecuador, Peru, Chile, Bolivia, and then ending off in Argentina. So uh, that's our trip in a nutshell, James. Sounds spectacular. So what's been the biggest adventure or the biggest surprise that you've come across, uh, you know, in your travels? Uh, you know, that's a great question. No one's asked me that in that way. Uh, definitely uh, the commonalities with humans, I find, like the fact that the uh, people are the same no matter where you go. I mean, whether it's in South America, North America, Asia, Africa, I'm sure even in Antarctica, people have the same needs and desires and wants. And, uh, you know, they're, they're pursuing happiness for their children and they're pursuing love and they're pursuing purpose. Uh, and they struggle with the same things. They struggle with money and they struggle with uh, being unfulfilled and they struggle with uh, connecting to the creator or spirituality and they connect they struggle to protect the environment and they struggle with uh, not getting angry and uh, being patient so i find humans are very um similar that's one big uh, revelation uh, no surprise there hmm. but the other big revelation is that humans are very different i mean um i, I was pretty much born and raised in vancouver uh, but when you go to the middle east all of a sudden, everyone's very, 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 very different in terms of uh, how women are treated or uh, how, um, how, how uh, kind of the culture there is different. In Africa, obviously, it's very different, a very traditional historical culture. Now we're in Latin America. And uh, um, like, for example, they take siestas in the middle of the day. Like normally in Canada, you'll be working like crazy from nine to five, uh, you know, in, the, in traditional North American society. Here it's like siestas and, uh, you know, things don't run on time. Uh, uh, if they say two o'clock, they might say two, you might show up at two or two fifteen. the buses. So th things don't work the same everywhere. So even though humans are similar, for some reason through culture and through history and um, um, just through different geographic differences, uh, they're very different. So that's uh, been very insightful to go and to visit and to understand uh, the similarity and differences between humans. So I, lo I love that. Uh, part of travel. Um, obviously, just seeing monuments and sightseeing is great, uh, but it's not fulfilling on its own. I mean, you can uh, check off your bucket list and go to the Great Wall of China, the pyramids, the Eiffel Tower, you can go Machu Picchu, you can go to Christ the Redeemer, Iguazu Falls, right? 
But the thing is, if you just do that on its own, it's not enough because it's a very shallow way of seeing the world. Um, and I've done that. I mean, I went to Europe and I just hit hit all the major tourist attractions in Europe. That was my first ever travel. But the mm -hmm. more you travel, you realize it's really about the connections you meet with the locals, trying out the food, uh, laughing over a, a, you know, a pint of beer or a coffee or a tea. Uh, wherever in the world you are, obviously, it's going to be different. Uh, and it's about connecting uh, at a very deep heart level with another person person from around the world. So uh, I really feel travel can change the world. And we as travelers, as nomads, as, um, as, as kind of like this, the, the digital entrepreneurs, we can be uh, part of this uh, change that this world def desperately needs. So uh, there's so many revelations, James, but I hope that, uh, that, that, that brings insight to your listeners. Yeah, no, very, very well said. Very well said. Now I'm here with Ricky Shetty, digital nomad and the daddy behind daddyblogger.com, who is obviously currently on a one year round the world trip. And when we return after a quick break, I'll ask Ricky to share how to get sponsored travel, including free hotels, sightseeing, transport, and food. We'll do that and more right after the break. Buzz coming up after we hear from our sponsors. Is your website hacked? Is your website displaying error messages or loading slowly? Even if there are no signs of malicious activity, your site may still be compromised. Websites, like cars, require regular maintenance to perform at their best and not leave you stranded. At Fjord, our website maintenance experts can help you assess which one of our maintenance plans will best support your needs. Visit FjordDigital.com or call 612-877-3840 and get the support and protection your website and business deserve. That's F-J-O-R-G-E Digital.com. Do you look at the task of ranking your site at the top of the search engines like you would climbing the top of Mount Everest? It doesn't have to be. TopSEOs.com knows how hard that climb can be, and they can make top ranking a reality. Top SEOs send you to only the right search vendors and agencies that they know will work for you. Since 2002, TopSEOs.com has reviewed and researched the best search engine marketing agencies and solutions providers. Don't risk the cost of falling off the proverbial peak of search rankings. Let Top SEOs give you peace of mind. TopSEOs.com, the independent authority on search vendors. Synergize your search engine education from 101 to rock star level. Only on Cranberry Radio. Cranberry.fm. Time now to hear some more affiliate buzz. Here's James and Arlene. Arlene is away today. However, I am here with Ricky Shetty, digital nomad, and the daddy behind daddyblogger.com, who is currently on a one year around the world trip with his family. Uh, now let's let's talk about this uh, this intriguing sentence, how to get sponsored travel, including free hotels, sightseeing, transport, and food. Now, I do know you as a, as the daddy blogger, and you've been the daddy blogger ever since I met you, and I know that you have a very successful blog that, uh, that you share and uh, that you've been getting sponsored on in Vancouver for the longest time with travel or, or local travel, uh, cars, uh, as far as... Uh, uh, food, all kinds of things, but you've taken this to a whole nother level. Give us, give us a little bit of a background on first, maybe daddy blogger, and then bring us up to date on what you're doing. Yeah, this is almost like a sequel episode because if you listen to the first podcast we did two years ago, I actually covered how we got, I think, over $30,000 worth of free product. Uh, we were getting tech gadgets, we were getting laptops and printers, and we were getting cars for us to drive, and we were getting even uh, a lot of flights and all locally, like we'd be flown uh, uh, to Nashville for a, a press trip. Uh, we got flown out to, over to the prairies, uh, to Winnipeg uh, with Volkswagen. Uh, Lexus uh, flew us over uh, somewhere. Uh, uh, so so we had a lot of local sponsorship. So uh, I knew uh, that I could actually um, take this uh, globally because it was working on a very Vancouver-based uh, level. And then it started working on a British Columbia-based level, which is our hometown province. And then I started working in other provinces in Canada. Um, uh, we did it in Toronto and Ontario. We did it in Alberta. We did it in uh, Saskatchewan and Manitoba. So uh, five provinces were able to get sponsored stuff. And then I started doing it in the U.S. We went to San Francisco, uh, California, uh, Seattle, Washington, Nashville, Tennessee. And all of a sudden, 
we started getting um, uh, sponsored stuff in all of these different states in the U.S. So I was like, okay, it obviously works in North America. Uh, and then uh, the big test was what was what I was doing, which is um, uh, getting sponsored uh, things, uh, including actual products and services. Like I've got amazing massages for free in return for writing about the massage. I've got, uh, you know, like helicopter rides, first class plane tickets. I've got uh, sponsored cars. So I, I have got a lot of stuff for free, quote unquote, because I actually do have to work for it. Uh, I don't have to pay in, in time in cash. I got to pay in time by uh, by doing the blog post, by doing the social media post, by doing a little video blogging. Uh, so our big test was, is this going to work internationally? And I knew it would work in some places. I didn't know if it would work anywhere. Uh, um, so what I have found is it does not work everywhere uh, because not everyone or not every country or every city is as blogger friendly as, for example, the Western world. So I, I, I know for a fact that uh, blogging works in North America uh, because I've done it. I know it works in Europe. Um, I know it works in uh, um, like Australia or New Zealand. Um, in terms of like Asia, uh, South America, Africa, it is definitely harder because they're, um, I don't want to be too critical, but they're a little bit behind the times in terms of um, catching up with the influencer bandwagon. Uh, mm -hmm. So th for, th for those of you who are listening who don't know what influencer marketing is, uh, basically influencers are the new word of mouth marketing. And the best form of marketing is always word of mouth. And I know this is called affiliate buzz. And affiliate marketers are basically um, a form of word of mouth marketing because an affiliate is marketing a product or service to their network um, and they're the trusted source. So instead of a uh, company A marketing directly to the customer, uh, they get the influencer, the affiliate to market. So um, influencer marketing is obviously different than affiliate marketing. Uh, influencers, they usually have build up um, uh, a network, uh, which I did uh, and have done with uh, daddyblogger.com. I built up my local network and it was really starting with my mom. Uh, she was my first reader. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> you know, you go from your mom. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So if you're, if, you're, if you're new to blogging or influencer marketing, you might be thinking, how do I start? Well, start with her. Start with your mom. Your mom's going to be your biggest fan. And then start with your dad and start with your brothers and sisters and cousins and uncles and aunts. And then you start with your local network and then you start with your social media network. Even though you might only have 300 Facebook friends or 500 Facebook friends, you start there. And then all of a sudden you start growing into the thousands and into the tens of thousands. So now I'm up to about 100,000 on my social media. I just hit 2 million views on my YouTube channel. Um, you know, So I currently have a big network. But like I said, it just started like uh, with anyone, with uh, good old mom, and uh, uh, and now I'm at like you know hundred thousand plus, <laughs> and Wait, I look so, at them. Yeah, so I go I was, on. I, I was just gonna say, so you mentioned this this word influencer marketer, and uh, yeah, it's definitely. I remember interviewing Matt Furry about this not too long ago, and he's uh, he talked at length about it as well. And this word is starting to pop up more and more and more. And I don't know actually who maybe coined the phrase, but I think it's pretty clearly exactly what it is. So how do you? Go about and find, uh, of course, you've, you, you've got the credibility because you've got the site, you've got the following, but how do you reach out? Where, where, do, you, where do you find your sponsors? Yeah, okay, so let's go there. Um, so in terms of, uh, it depends on what you want to get sponsored. So let's focus on the travel because uh, I think er almost all of your listeners are probably passionate about travel no matter what they do. I think we all are to some degree, um, some more than others. So in terms of where do you reach out to? So um I'll tell you what I do. I started at a local level. So no matter where you are in the world listening, uh, you might be in Chicago or New York or L.A. or you might be in London, England or Sydney, Australia. So what I would do is, as a listener, start locally. So wherever your hometown is, start doing um, some blog reviews in that area. Uh, you might want to do a staycation. Uh, you might want to do a road trip. And then you reach out um, to the tourism board in that area. Um, so I'll give you the example of uh, British Columbia, just because it's uh, it's kind of um, uh, relevant rele relevant to both James and me. So in British Columbia, there's the Sunshine Coast, there's the Okanagan, there's Harrison Hot Springs, there's Vancouver Island. So I started doing reviews in all of these places. So I would I would first do the Okanagan, and then I do the Sunshine Coast, and then I would start reviewing them, and then uh, I would connect with the tourism board of the Okanagan, the Sunshine Coast. And then I would do the pitch letter. Basically what it is is 
Hi there, my name is Ricky Shetty. I'm from Vancouver, BC, Canada. Um, I'm traveling um, to the Okanagan um, with my wife and kids, and we'd love to review some of the family-friendly accommodation, sightseeing restaurants in the Okanagan. Um, so I'd, reach, I'd, I'd target that region, which includes cities like Kelowna, um, Asuyus, Kamloops, etc. And then uh, the Okanagan Tourism will get back to me and saying, uh, yes, uh, we'll be able to help set you up with uh, accommodation in Kelowna, Kamloops, and Osuyus, but unfortunately, we can't do anything for you in Vernon. And uh, they, uh, they uh, potentially would be able to co coordinate the whole trip. Uh, this is actually called a media trip or a press trip. And um, uh, so they would coordinate the accommodation. They would co coordinate the sightseeing, um, some restaurant meals for you. Even um, I've been given visa cards for me to spend in the area or like uh, um, uh, food vouchers. Uh, um, even transport sometimes, they'll fly you over there uh, uh, if, you're, if you're needing a flight. Um, uh, sometimes they'll give you Uber credit. So it's quite hmm. amazing uh, the power of these tourism boards because the whole mandate of a tourism board is to bring tourists there. And um, as influencers, uh, we have the ability to persuade our network to actually go to a place they might not have thought of because some people might be always going the same place but because of what i'm writing they might be like hey that hotel or that guest house or that resort looks amazing and ricky and his kids are there so obviously that might be a great place for me and to take my kids uh so that's how influencer marketing works in terms of uh uh connecting with tourism boards uh so now james i just want to quickly share uh, what if it doesn't work? What if uh, the tourism board says no or they can't accommodate you? Then what you do is, is uh, plan A is contact the tourism board. They coordinate everything for you. Plan B is you can actually start co coordinating directly with hotels or sightseeing uh, attractions um, directly. So what you do there is you email the hotels saying, you know, same kind of pitch letter. Uh, I'm Ricky. I'm coming up to, uh, um, um, let's use a different example now. I'm coming out to the Silicon Valley, and I'm looking to uh, review some hotels in the Silicon Valley. Uh, would you be able to accommodate us, us at your hotel or resort? And then the hotels might say yes, no, maybe, right? So uh, you typically have to email a lot of hotels to get a few responses. And the more it's kind of a numbers game. So the more hotels you um, email, the more likely you're going to get one that says yes to you. Um, so that's what I do. I pretty much reach the tourism boards first, James. And if it doesn't work, then I'll reach the hotels. Uh, I definitely want to first make sure my accommodation is covered because that's one of the big travel expenses. Um, once my hotel has been compliment, uh, you know, covered complimentary uh, or sponsored, then I'll start reaching out to the tourism um, uh, sightseeing companies. Um, and it might be day trips on a company like, um, there's some great companies. One is called Big Bus or City Sightseeing, and they're all over North America and the world. And they do day trips like hop on, hop off kind of buses. And uh, I'll try to get those uh, sponsored as well. So hopefully uh, that clarifies things, James. You bet. You bet. Now, I, now I would, I would, I would um, point out that these, uh, and maybe you could talk to this a little bit more, because uh, you talked about course writing review and uh, doing a little video and, and the various things, social media, uh, and the reason these these companies are interested and in, and in they take you up on your offer is because they're obviously looking for exposure. They get uh, an influencer to be able to present them in a positive light. You're going into their facility, uh, you're taking their adventure tour, whatever you happen to be doing, you're going to be writing about it. So take us through the process of, of what they're thinking when you're communicating with them in the email and then uh, what's it, what's really in it for them. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that too because it's the f favorite uh, radio station, right? <laughs> Sorry, Cranberry Radio, but it's actually what's in it for me, FM, right? What's in it for me? Uh, you bet. So uh, every company, every individual wants to answer that question. Now, why would they give you a free hotel? Why would they give you sightseeing unless they can benefit? Um, so uh, I think I mentioned that too. The mandate of most tourism boards or hotels is obviously to get clients, right? I mean, uh, they want to get people to come there and spend money. Uh, so what's in it for them is I'm going to actually bring them customers. I'm going to bring them clients with cash in their pockets. I mean, uh, uh, or credit cards in their wallets, right? So um, see these potential customers, clients, travel, they all have uh, credit cards. They have Visa's MasterCards. Uh, they have American Expresses. They're going to be spending money. I mean, uh, uh, l l people who travel, they usually save the whole year just to do an incredible two-week vacation or uh, the summer vacations, right? So they purposely save um, uh, the whole year, like struggling the 95 job, just so they can have a two-week vacation, right? So um, um, companies know that. Um, so, And they know that we 
have the ability to help them market. So instead of them uh, spending money on a TV um, uh, uh, commercial or a radio commercial or a newspaper ad or a magazine ad or um, you know any kind of other advertising medium, uh, we actually are a lot cheaper because um, sometimes we don't even ask for money. We're happy with just with getting a free hotel room, right? Uh, hmm. And that's actually not a big cost for a hotel because it's actually almost like a zero cost. Because usually uh, hotels occupate, uh, um, operate at, a, you know, like a, maybe a 50, 60 percent occupancy rate. Obviously, depends on the time of year and on, on season, off season, etc. So a lot of hotels have empty rooms. And uh, instead of having empty room, why didn't you actually have an influencer stay there who can actually help you fill those rooms, right? So there's uh, a very minimal cost, like the cost of cleaning, and you know, like uh, there's not, there's no, there's no major cost in letting an influencer stay in your hotel. So I. I don't see why more hotels don't just always say yes. I think uh, part of the reason why they don't say yes more often is they don't realize um, the power of a social media marketer. Because um, I know for, fa for a fact, when I've shared, people have actually sh said to me, that hotel looks great, Ricky. Um, I want to stay there too. And I've done a lot of screen captures of those kind of, uh, um, like I did, a, like one, one time I tweeted, and I tweeted that we're staying in uh, uh, the Sandman Hotel in Squamish. And I tweeted that we were uh, sliding down the water uh, uh, water slide in the swimming pool. And then my friend, uh, shout out to him, Victor Thomas, he saw my tweet. He responded saying, that looks like an amazing hotel. We're thinking about going to Squamish. Uh, we'd love to stay there. And then a shout out to uh, the Sandman Hotel because what the Sandman did is they saw that tweet and they responded saying, hey, Victor, uh, you know what? We have a special mm -hmm. on right now. Book here. What Victor did is he booked it and boom, everyone won. I won because I was doing influencer marketing. The Sandman won because they got a new guest. And Victor won because he got a great deal. Let's talk about the mindset of this because, uh, and you're, you're covering it uh, somewhat now. And this isn't, and, and you talked about this two years ago, and I'd encourage listeners to go check out Ricky's uh, episode from a couple of years back and just do a Google search for Affiliate Buzz and uh, Ricky Shetty, uh, S-H-E-T-T-Y. Now, this could be applied, what you taught us back then and what you're teaching us now, this could be applied to basically anything. So, for example, I'm thinking, okay, I go to conferences all over the place, and let's say I'm heading down to a conference in Chicago, and I, I spoke at a number of them there. Uh, typically, you, you want to stay in the hotel that is where the event is being hosted, usually, but not always. A lot of times we don't. A lot of times Arlene will pick a nice little boutique hotel somewhere close to the area because she likes it and it's got something that she wants to see and it's cool. Uh, but you could you could apply this to that. I'm just thinking, uh, you know, of course, the conference hotel is going to fill up mostly with the attendees. But there's always tons of overflow where people can't stay at the hotel because there's the, the, the block of rooms, quote unquote, has been booked out. So now we're spilling into other hotels. And then, of course, there's the restaurants, there's the attractions. And if you've got some influence, if you're a speaker at an event or you've got a podcast, a blog, you could apply exactly what you're talking about to pretty much anything, can't you? Even the conference itself. So if you wanted to go to some conferences and they cost too much, because some conferences cost you like 500 to 1,000 US for a two to three day conference, right? So you might as well, uh, you know, and not pay for the conference, get it for free, uh, tell them you'll promote it and, and do a review. Uh, and that's actually what I've done. I, I actually review uh, conferences too. Um, and I get the admission to the conference for free. And I can actually make money by marketing the conference and getting affiliate commission, speaking of the affiliate buzz, right? So mm -hmm. I, I actually, I'm strategic in the way that I actually get to go to the conference and get paid to attend. Now, you mentioned uh, when we were chatting earlier uh, in, in uh, some of the texts you sent over. So you've talked about tourism boards, but you also mentioned travel companies. How does that work into this? Yeah, so uh, I look at travel as kind of fourfold. Um, so you got to figure out all of your costs. And I mean, um, uh, you know, travel can be expensive, especially with the flights, the hotels, the sightseeing, uh, the tours, the food, the wine, you know, all that. Adds and, up. A, so, and, and a wife and three kids along with you. Yeah, times four, right? <laughs> times four. <laughs> so you multiply that and it, it, it adds up, right? Your, your, your wallet takes a ding, your bank account takes a ding, and all of a sudden your credit card uh, go, goes, uh, it gets declined, right? Uh, so, so instead of you having your credit card decline, why don't you uh, uh, use the power of your blog? And if you haven't started a blog, I highly recommend starting a blog uh, for many reasons. One is to uh, um, um, 
obviously for yourself because you're going to create memories for yourself because it's very easy to forget what you've done. You do an incredible vacation and all of a sudden you come back and boom, it's gone. Where did I go? What town was that? What hotel was that? But if you have a blog, you actually um, create memories. And then obviously it's, it's good for your uh, friends and network because you're inspiring others to travel. And thirdly, it's good because you're going to save money. Um, so I look at it like how can I save money in those four areas? Um, um, accommodation is a, definitely a big one. Sightseeing is a big one. Transport is a big one. And foods is a big one. So I uh, try to get all four of those covered through the tourism boards. If not, I'll start knocking the list one by one. Um, the hotels, definitely. Uh, then the sightseeing. Restaurants, um, you know, I, I, I used to do a lot of restaurant reviews back in my hometown. Um, I ran a community called Wavia Foodies. Uh, and then I would do a whole bunch of restaurant reviews. And I would write about them and recommend uh, different restaurants. Um, because I love to eat, and I think we all do. And uh, a big part of travel is actually the cuisine. Uh, so uh, the gastronomy. Uh, so instead of just seeing the sights and, um, you know, um, cooking in the hotel or the hostel, why didn't you actually try some of the local cuisine, right? So um, we've, we've been able to get um, hotel meals uh, complimentary. And the last big uh, cost is the transport cost, right? Um, so unfortunately, a lot of airlines do not work with bloggers yet. Um, some of the for new routes, uh, like for example, if uh, um, American Airlines just open up a new uh, flight from, uh, um, you know, like um, Vancouver to Hawaii or something, right? So then they would be more interested in getting influencers to write about them. Or if they had really bad PR, like United did uh, a few months ago mm. when they had the incidents again. of a... So, again, again, United breaks guitars <laughs> and it drives, drives people off planes. And, you know, it, it does kind of some weird stuff. So uh, then they need influencer marketers to help fix uh, the bad reputation, right? <laughs> uh, so Absolutely. Usually, Usually airlines, um, unfortunately, don't work with bloggers at a very mainstream level. Uh, I think just the costs are too high. And also, um, they don't necessarily need influencers because, uh, besides the bad reputation thing, most airlines are at capacity. If you go to an airplane, uh, usually they're full. Uh, um, 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 so they don't actually need it. And I don't think it's a cost advantage. Um, advantageous for them to give a free flight or this kind of flight in return for blogs. So I, I think that's one of the reasons that airplanes don't do it as much, airlines. Um, so you got to pretty much cover the flight yourself, but there's a beautiful thing called travel hacking. And uh, a quick one-on-one here, travel hacking is where you can use your airline points and miles uh, to accumulate enough points for you to get really cheap flights. Um, uh, you can do that through credit card sign-up bonuses, uh, through um, all those alliances, uh, there's a Starwood Alliance, there's a One World Alliance, uh, etc. So if you can uh, get points, rack them up through credit cards. I'm not an expert in this area, but if you look up travel hacking, there's the points guy. There's um, there's a great podcast called The Extra Pack of Peanuts, uh, where they really talk about travel hacking. Um, so that's another way to eliminate your costs by doing something in travel hacking. And some of these guys, they actually are able to, uh, to fly across the Pacific, across the Atlantic, for literally under 100 US. Hmm. Incredible. Very good. Not Very only good. economy, not only economy, they're flying like uh, business class, first class. They're flying on the Emirates uh, 380, which is the biggest airline in the world. They're actually having showers on the airplane. And uh, um, yeah, you know, it's incredible uh, what travel hacking and travel vlogging can do. Um, so uh, that's in a nutshell what I do is I, uh, I try to eliminate the cost of um, transport uh, by getting like local buses or uh, local sightseeing companies to sponsor a trip in return for reviews. Terrific. Terrific. Very good. Very, very, very good stuff. Now I'm here with Ricky Shetty, digital nomad and the daddy behind daddyblogger.com, who's currently on his one year around the world trip. Uh, and after we return after our, our last break here, I'm going to ask him to share the biggest secrets and aha moments he's learned along the way about getting sponsored travel. We'll do that right after the break. More affiliate buzz coming up after we hear from our sponsors. How much are your best ideas worth? PriorThings.com gives you an added layer of protection for all of your intellectual property, ideas, and creative things. New business idea, pitch deck, PowerPoint presentation, song lyrics, source code, killer blog posts. We help you protect it all. How do we do it? We use the same technology platform that secures transactions for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Learn more at PriorThings.com. Check out exclusive listener pricing for Cranberry Radio listeners by going to bit.ly slash Founders Circle. 
Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every day. Medical marijuana is my last resort, and it helps me when all other drugs have failed. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. Looking for a white-label SEO and social platform for your clients? Think eBrands. Free and unlimited SEO audit reports. eBrands. Premium Facebook apps and welcome page creators. eBrands. Twitter management app, analytics, and mobile site generators. eBrands. Let eBrands manage your search and social media campaigns and give you and your clients access to their white label dashboard, which have great reports that will wow your clients and deliver great ROI and results. Try eBrands for 30 days. Go to eBrandsWithAZ.com or call 1-866-625-5717. That's eBrands with a Z for eBrands. More refreshing talk radio on air and on demand 24-7. Only on Cranberry Radio. Time now to hear some more affiliate buzz. Here's James and Arlene. Arlene is away today on the island uh, visiting our youngest daughter and, of course, new grandson, Calvin. So I'm sure she'll be back probably next week. But uh, not to worry, I do have Ricky Shetty here, Digital Nomad, and the daddy behind daddyblogger.com, who is currently on a one-year around-the-world trip with his uh, wonderful family. Now, I had a chance uh, during the break there to look up the previous episode, uh, Ricky, and that was way back on... August the 11th, 2014. So it's coming up on three years ago. It doesn't time fly. It does indeed. Uh, you know, I thought it was two years, but it looks like it's almost three. Amazing. Yeah, and that's episode number 349. And you talked about uh, the secret to receiving $30,000 in free products and building a lifestyle business around your family. Obviously, you're the real deal, and you've done it uh, very successfully. And now you've transitioned into... Uh, Doing exactly the same thing, uh, only traveling the world with it. Now, what has been the biggest, uh, maybe the, some of the secrets, that you, the, maybe the biggest secret that you've learned to uh, to getting sponsored travel? I look at it as definitely you have to build your brand first. Uh, I teach a strategy. It's called Make, Market, and Monetize Your Blog. And I, I, I've been teaching this for years. And it's very much the same principles when I first started. And uh, now we are uh, blogging for five years plus now later. And I, I teach the same principle. Basically, first build your brand. Once you build your brand, um, you'll start getting the audience. Uh, the stronger the brand, the, the greater the readership. Once you have your readership, your network, that's where the money will come in. So you get, uh, you know, you get start getting sponsored posts, and you start selling your own products and services. You do some affiliate marketing, and uh, you you basically get some advertisers to help uh, create revenue on the blog itself. Uh, so the, one of the biggest surprises for me, James, is the fact that it's much easier than you think it is. Um, and when I first started, I didn't know. I was going to get, um, you know, like you mentioned that the figure 30,000 plus. Now it's uh, definitely way more than 50,000 plus because I, I, if you, I, I haven't actually done um, the arithmetic here. I got to sit down and look at all the hotels we've got for free on this trip alone. Mm. Uh, it's literally been 50 to 60 free hotels we've got. Uh, and you add that up by like, uh, you know, at least 100 US per night and, you know, times 50, 60. You know, the, the, the numbers start adding up there, right? So, mm. uh, um just on hotels alone, we have saved a ton. Um, so let's just let's just do a little bit of math here on the radio. Uh, if you look at a typical hotel around the world, it's going to be around the hundred U.S. mark. I mean, obviously, if you're in a cheaper area like Asia, it'll be much cheaper, maybe forty, fifty, sixty. If you're in a more expensive area like uh, Europe, like uh, London or Paris, it might be hundred, hundred fifty, right? So if you if you kind of average it out uh, over the course of a month, if you're traveling for a month continuously, it's going to be like. 100 U.S. times 30, that's going to be almost 3,000 U.S. just in accommodation alone. And that's expensive. Um, you know, most people's mortgage or <laughs> rent isn't that high, right? So that's why people don't travel, just because they can't afford a month of travel if they're spending, uh, you know, 100 U.S. per night in a hotel. But as a travel blogger, I'm able to get uh, about 70 to 80 percent of my hotel stays for free, especially if I'm in a place like North America if I'm in a place like, um, you know, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, uh, parts of Asia, uh, I've actually struggled to do it as, as well in South America. But South America is a lot cheaper. Like we're staying in a place that's about 30 U.S. for a night uh, right now. Um, so the thing is, if you add up the savings, 
uh, you actually like there were some months where I was spending about four to five hundred on accommodation, uh, just because the rest of it was free through our hotels, through our resorts, through even hostels. Uh, in South Africa, for example, um, we found the hotels weren't as blogger friendly. So we started uh, seeing if the hostels would, uh, would be willing to host us. And, uh, you know, you, when you think of a hostel, you might think, oh, it's a backpacker, uh, people in their 20s. But hostels are very different than they were back in the day. Now hostels are very um, um, uh, much more hygienic and they're, they're much more generational. Uh, if you look at the hostels in New York, for example, a lot of European travelers who have families, they can't afford to stay in expensive hotels. So that, uh, they'll have like private family rooms with your own ensuite washroom. So... Uh, we actually got a lot of hostels uh, for free in South Africa. Um, so I, I think I'm just amazed by the fact that uh, uh, so many people are trusting us uh, uh, with, with um, you know, free stuff uh, in return for our posts. And it's incredible. Like, I had no idea when I started. I was just writing about me being a dad, <laughs> you know, my experiences uh, in fatherhood. And here I am uh, getting flown around the world and getting sponsored trips and staying in incredible hotels. Like, I mentioned the $100 hotels, but if you look at my YouTube channel at the uh, uh, hotels we review, uh, I've stayed in like three to 400 US dollar, like uh, four and five star resorts. They're incredible. Sometimes you have like, um, uh, you know, a two bedroom suite with your own kitchen. And obviously that helps if you, if you have kids, right? Having a multiple room. So the kids can be crying in another. <laughs> I could be doing my work in another room while, uh, you know, uh, while, while they're having a temper, temper tantrum. So, uh, you know, it, it's just been incredible, James, the amount of stuff we, we've been getting. And I'm very grateful for it. And I'm very willing to teach others. And uh, I love uh, giving back, supporting. That's why I love doing these kind of interviews, just because I want to show the people there's a huge power to travel blogging. Uh, and, um, you know, when people say what's the ideal career, uh, a lot of people say they love to be a travel writer because that's what happens with travel writers. They end up traveling the world and get, getting paid for it. I can see we're coming up, uh, unfortunately, to the end of the show here. What... Uh, Take take a moment if you wouldn't and share your contact anything uh, contact information uh, where people can learn more and anything else you'd like to uh, you'd like to talk about or share that uh, you've got on the go. Yeah, you know, once you start traveling, it's an incredible blessing, and uh, you see poverty in the world, and you want to make a difference, and uh, you just realize you come from a country of privilege, and uh, it's very humbling uh, because the uh, the fact that we, we come from Western the world and we're able to get in a plane, we're able to fly around the world. Uh, when I uh, see a place like uh, I'm in Guyana, a lot of people haven't even left the city; they haven't left their country, and. Uh, uh, you got to take advantage of that uh, as a person living in the West, you know, uh, because uh, you, you have the opportunity to travel the world. Why would you just uh, hang around your own city and uh, drive your kids back and forth from school and, pay, uh, you know, uh, pay bills till you die or pay, end up paying your mortgage? Because we have this incredible opportunity in this day and age to travel the world. And as a blogger, as a travel influencer, you can uh, do that for very, very cheap, as I've demonstrated in this interview. Um you can find me very easily, uh, daddyblogger.com. That's uh, my brand of choice, and uh, you can connect me with me on there. I'm actually going to be back for episode number three, round number three, uh, talking about how to be a digital nomad and how to make money while you're traveling. I haven't even touched that part, but uh, I just launched something called Digital Nomad Mastery, and uh, stay tuned for that. In about a month from now, I'll be sharing all the ins and outs of how to actually not just save money while you're traveling, but how to make money as well. So thanks, everyone, for listening, and reach out to me if you have any questions about anything I've said. I'd love to elaborate, and I'd love to respond to you personally. Ricky, and I look forward to having you back. Of course, daddyblogger.com. That'll give you links to uh, his Facebook, his uh, YouTube channel, his Twitter, uh, and his LinkedIn as well. So daddyblogger.com. Ricky, thanks so much for uh, taking the time to share with us. We'll see you in just over a month, and uh, I'll be interested to see where you uh, where we're connecting with you uh, at that point, what country you happen to be in. So enjoy, uh, enjoy your trips and your travel, and all the best to your family. Yeah, we'll talk to you in about a month, and I think we'll be somewhere in Colombia. So hopefully we'll have good internet, and I look forward to connecting with you and all of your listeners from around the world. Wonderful. Now, I can see we are out of time. Keep in mind that if there's something here that you missed uh, that Ricky mentioned today, that we always do take the show notes for you, and you can find the show notes for this particular episode at jamesmortel.com forward slash AB465. And a reminder that if you'd like to be alerted each week to new episodes, I always invite you to 
to uh, take 30 seconds right now if you haven't done so already open up your email and subscribe to the affiliate buzz by sending a blank email to affiliate underscore buzz at aweber.com that's affiliate underscore buzz at aweber.com ricky thanks again and to our listeners thanks for listening to another edition of the affiliate buzz The opinions expressed are those of the hosts and their guests and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of Cranberry News Marketing and Cranberry.fm. Rebroadcasts or retransmission of this content without proper consent is prohibited 